Thanks, Sarah, for uh, coming to our campus and, and talking to our students and to me. And it's just really good to connect with you because you have such a great deal of wisdom, especially with regards uh, something I'd like to talk to you about here uh, about dating, which is a complicated <laughs> topic, as you know. <laughs> yes. And, you know, he, I, I encounter students all the time talking about dating. And, and for some, the struggles are uh, really motivated by good desires. They want to do God's will. Um, other people struggle with chastity in their dating relationships. Um, some people, a lot of people, deal with hurt. Mm -hmm. I think it would be helpful. Uh, could you just like, w what is dating? Like, what's what's a good definition? If, if a student said, "Why should I date?" or "What is it?" Like, can you right, just right, right. help to find that? Sometimes I think about, you know, how did I get into this messy, complicated um, ministry of relationships and dating? Um, because that question of what is dating is so hard to answer um, in our day and age especially uh, in a time where it's a lot of dating apps and a lot of um, you know you might meet someone but it's really it's very easy to get to know each other without even being in person and that is so different than I think what we all grew up what a lot of us grew up with in times of old um, so in my work with college students and young adults uh, especially, you know, I, my husband's a professor at Benedictine, and so we live across the street from 2,000 college students. And just listening to them, same as you, you know, it's, I feel like it changes every five years. It's like what it was, you know, maybe 10 years ago isn't even what it is now. What it was 60 years ago, like when our grandparents were all dating, is very different. So I think the definition of dating continues to change. Um, I joke with students that we make it way more complicated than it needs yeah. to be, but then we get into the trying to define it and how to navigate dating and all of a sudden it's like, no, it really is kind of hard and complicated and um, I'm not a phone hater, I'm not a social media hater, I'm not you know, a technology hater, but there definitely has come new challenges for them. I always tell the students how proud I am of them for their fight because we didn't, you know, we, you know, you and I are, are similar in age, we didn't grow up with the same deck of cards, you know, that they did and they play with a lot of different, you know, different pieces of the puzzle that we just didn't even, we couldn't even imagine. Right. So you just said, you know, working through hurts and, you know, failings and mistakes and baggage and drama and, you know, no one leaves junior high and high school without some of that, mm -hmm. you know, just questioning who you are and you bring all of that to college, you bring all of that into the young, you're young, you know, as a young adult or young professional and um, I think it's really easy for people to want to jump into dating as a fix, yeah. a quick fix um, or a, I don't feel my worth, therefore I'm going to find someone who can, can convince me of that or yeah. I'm going to jump into this relationship because it, it's a, to be honest, a lot of people I think it's a social, um, what do you call it, like a status symbol. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, well, I have a, yeah. you know, I have a date. I have a date. I'm dating someone or whatever. Instagram photo with your... Yeah, I mean, where I'm going to date myself, but I remember when the girls would and guys would all talk about like we became Facebook official. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And now it's like with TikTok or Snapchat, you know, uh, I was joking with some girls last night. They were like, yeah, I'm just so tired of guys asking for like my snap yeah. instead of asking for my phone number because it's like they don't even want to talk on the phone. Right. Or, you know, so I talked to a lot of guys, you know, navigating. Dating is very hard right now. And that definition of dating, I think from the beginning of time was getting to know someone um, in a way that might lead to something more. Right. Um, and so I, I try to make a distinction between dating and courting, um, not because I want to be all super technical and make it even more complicated, but in my book, um, I call it the natural progression of a relationship. So it goes from like acquaintances to true friends yeah. to dating. Um, well, actually, there's a step in between there called like stating your intentions. Oh. Um, that's one that I, I I didn't make it up, but I feel I felt like it was really important to talk about because a lot of times people would go from friends to dating, and depending on how good of friends you were, it would be kind of oh, we're just super friends, yeah. or we just uh, well, my new favorite one, Father, is um, some students were telling me that they they have. Um, people that they go on freights with. And I'm like, what's a freight? And they're like, a friend date. We're just friends. We would never date, but we go on dates, like mm -hmm. friend dates. I'm like, wait, isn't that just dating? You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but they don't want to call it that yeah, because yeah. they're so afraid of ruining their friendships. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have all these elements and then dating and courting and engagement and marriage. So in me defining dating, I'm always like, dating is a step along this beautiful, you know, avenue, this beautiful journey, this beautiful adventure. Um, no matter what your vocation is, you know, knowing people, being friends with people, and navigating what God wants in your life, yeah. you're going to have to have, you know, these times where you define these relationships. And so dating, I always joke with students, so I'm like, can you hear the difference between dating and courting? Dating is, I'd really like to get to know you better. Courting is, I think I might, you might be the person I'm supposed to marry. 
slight difference. I don't know if you hear it or not, yeah. right? Like dating, I think we put a lot of pressure on dating. Yeah. Um, and you know, everyone's sweet grandma or their hairdresser is like, so are you seeing anyone? It's yeah, like this yeah. constant pressure to yeah. be with someone, to see, you know, see yourself with someone. So I think students, especially college students, feel a lot of pressure. And yeah. they feel a lot of pressure to get it right. And it can be very paralyzing, I think, for the poor guys. You know, I love, I love speaking to the men. And I think a lot of times the men are just like, I don't, you know, they're sophomores, they're freshmen. They're like, well, I'm not really ready to get married, so I don't really want to ask. I don't really want to talk to women. You know, I'm no. like, okay, take a deep breath. It's okay. Like, that's not, you know, and I, I try to be really, very real with the women. Like, an invitation to coffee is not a marriage proposal. So you need yeah. to take a deep breath also, you know, and, and not overcomplicate this. Yeah. One thing uh, I tell people is, like, when they're, when they're single, um, especially single in the sense of not having a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Sure. Uh, that the, the, you, it's this beautiful opportunity that you're most likely never going to have again. You know, right. like you, you're single for a time. It's really a, a time to treasure, uh, and it's really a time to uh, to learn how to love yourself and to be confident in who you are, independent of another human being. You know. Right. But you, you talked about how it's not a fix. How dating's not a fix. How yeah. can? What do you have to say to single people? Uh, that are kind of disappointed that they don't have uh, a significant other in their life. Right, yeah. I think that um, I spoke about this at the Vacation Jamboree a little bit about those fears, you know, the, the fear of missing out, the fear of yeah. rejection, the fear of, um, oh, I think the fear of being forgotten is very real on social media. You know, a lot of students are like, I could never get off of social media because no way we would know, you know who yeah. I am. And, um, and that dating culture is very real on the phone, you know. But I think that the ultimate one is this fear of failure. And I think that some people see, well, if I'm not with someone, if, I, if someone's not finding me attractive and wanting yeah. to date me, then I'm a failure. Yeah. Like, I'm just a failure. Um, and if I'm not dating someone, then that means that my worth is bottomed out. And I think it really affects their confidence. And so for me, it's that big step backwards and saying, look, you know, I shared this, you know, last night at the talk is, I think a lot of people, if you look at our world, you know, whether it's, people who are, you know, involved in their faith or not, you really do see this, you know, once I get a significant other, my whole life is going to, you know, I'll be happy <laughs> when and if. Everything's going to fall yeah. into place. You know, the Rubik's Cube thing, like, I'm going to figure this out. But it, they really do, I think, believe that it all hinges upon a person yeah. that's going to be their everything, fill them up completely, be their affirmation piece, take away their pain. It's like, wow, you're actually looking for Jesus Christ. But when you try to make someone your God, you are going to crush them under the weight of that. Yeah. And you're always going to be disappointed. And that was something that I learned from a priest in, in college. And, and I was in confession, actually. And I, I really look at that as um, you have those blockbuster, blockbuster moments in your life where you're like, wow. You know, like my life was really, um, I was very confused. Yeah. And when he like set that all straight for me, I can't even tell you the freedom that I felt. And it wasn't overnight. Like I always told the students, it wasn't like I was like, oh, got it, check. You right. know, okay, good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good, great, got it. But it was, it began this process of, I need to be really confident in who I am as a daughter of God. And I need to be very confident in my love for God and God's love for me and that I'm enough. Even if yeah. I never get married, even if I never, you know, if I never find this person, whatever, because that person isn't supposed to be this, this idol, this God, this yes. quick fix in my yes. life. <laughs> and, and that's why, you know, when I look at priesthood or religious life and I try to talk to students about it, I'm like, look, you're, those, those men and women that found their vocation, the first step they had to find was, I need, you know, I don't need someone to be my, this, I'm not right. lacking anything. Yeah. Um, and then when people see my marriage, you know, I always say like, you, you want, a, you want a striving holy marriage because I think people see Swaff and I, my husband, you know, Andy, and it's like, gosh, like they really love being on mission. They love, sure. they're always looking out. It's not yeah. running at each other. It's running towards something. I and I tell that. them, I'm like, that's the beauty of our marriage is that it's not, I'm not looking at him to be my everything. He's always pointing me towards Christ and I'm always pointing him towards Christ. Uh, one of our favorite questions we ask each other is like, how can I pray for you? Because it's not just how are you doing, it's like, how right. can I pray for you? Or um, or have you prayed today? That's one of our other questions, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, like, can I get you your time? You know, like, yeah. what a gift to have someone running with you and checking in on you. Um, so I think it's that slow untwisting of all the lies mm -hmm. that they've believed that about themselves, about like they're worthless if they don't have right. this person. And then, no, actually, and this is something I like to talk about a lot because I think a lot of students are like, this starts to make sense is, that selflessness and that confidence as a, a son or daughter of God and that peace and that stability that they're not looking for someone to be there, everything is ridiculously attractive. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, like when, no, when you're looking for someone, it's like, oh my gosh, that's one of the things I, I really fell in love with, with my husband was he was so confident in who he was and he was like just a, a warrior and he was yeah. a virtuous man and he wasn't swayed by 
some of those like dramas of the world. Do you know what I mean? And that was just so ridiculous. I wanted to be led by him. So when I talk to men, I love speaking to men. You know that I love I love the battle of the the young man is. They're so like, please help me because yeah. there's not much out there, you know, like yeah. in, in this relationship's heart area. Um, but getting them to understand that like, no, like the women want you to lead them. And and for the women to understand that, like you really need to be whole and confident and healing and feeling, you know, very at peace as a daughter of God yeah. and not grasping. Right. You know, I always, I always tell young adults, I'm like, repeat after me, I will not settle and absolutely nothing good happens out of desperation. Like those are the two, you know, cause you start to talk to those 20 somethings, 30 yeah. somethings. And they're like, I don't know what to do. I feel like something's wrong with me. I have a lot of 20 somethings that have never been asked out. And they're like, something's absolutely wrong with me. I'm like, no, it's not. Yeah. We just are trying, like we have to get this whole dating thing sorted out. Um, so, you know, similar to last night, I make everybody take a deep breath, yeah. <laughs> you know, breathe in truth and exhale lies, like inhale, you know, inhale truth, exhale lies. And, and just really have peace and confidence that this is, it's not a puzzle to be solved. It's a gift to be received. You know, I always say, the, you know, singlehood is a gift and everyone wants to punch me and I respect yeah. it because they're yeah. like, this is not a gift. Easy for you to say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I understand, but God really is carving out time. And yeah. so, um, so yeah, trying to help them to, to make it, to make dating a little less complicated, but also for them to see that good dating relationships have very little to do with dating, has a lot to do with preparing yourself um, and being able to see and have an awareness of what you really want yeah. um, in a man of God or in a woman of God. Yeah. What, uh, I always love talking about dating because, like, I, I didn't, like, maybe by nature want to talk about dating a lot, but it's just, like, the nature of the job. It's, like, you mm. just end up, because this is the time of the Always. Life. It's, but, like, the hot topic, yeah. yeah I have, like, a million, Navigating. A million questions, but, you know, uh, the, I love the image of, of running together towards a common goal um, is so helpful. And when I do marriage prep a lot, too, but also with dating, I always tell them, like, Phrases like "you're perfect" or "you complete me," it is like not <laughs> Terrible. helpful. And, no, and not to, helpful. And to is look exactly at someone, right. to look at someone as your completion puts an unbearable burden on them that they can't manage. Absolutely. So it's just, Absolutely. and you're going to be disappointed too because they won't complete yeah, you. Yeah, right. Um, and and all those little bickerings and all those little <laughs> fights. It's like, yeah. okay, wait, let's take a step back. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, you're just a teammate. You're a helpmate. You yeah, know, as absolutely. we hear in Genesis, I would yeah. say you're marrying a teammate, someone to help you, and you you help them. You're on the same team, the same goal. Right. Um, uh, one of the one of the difficulties, though, is uh, especially with couples that do have the the end in mind, namely mm. our relationship with God. That marriage fundamentally is to help us, to, the husband and the wife, to help each other uh, facilitate that relationship with yeah. God, like you just described Absolutely. in prayer. Um, but they run into obstacles, especially with chastity and dating. And yeah. so they have good intentions. They might even have boundary talks with each other. Right. But they just can't. They, they, they keep falling into the same things over and over. Right. What, what do you tell couples that find themselves in those situations? No. Father, I love this question. Not. And this is the hardest one to talk about because I think people feel like um, chastity is just one of those words that yeah. they get all stressed out about. Whether, you know, if you're not living a life of chastity, chastity everyone's like, oh, here comes Debbie Downer, Betty Buzzkill. You know, <laughs> yeah, they're like, yeah. tell me how to live my life. And if you are pursuing chastity, <coughs> it just feels like this heavy burden. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because no one said it was easy. Um, but I, you know, I always tell people with chastity, and I, I think I mentioned it last night, but like, you fall ten steps before you fall, and I, you know, yeah. and I always, I think that's just good mm. for people to understand. Yeah. Like I, you made decisions along the way that got yes. you to that place, yes, yes, and yes, so yes, I yes, think yes. when, and like, again, don't be mad. You know, I had a priest friend, Father Brendan Rowling, um, would always say, "Don't get mad um, that you didn't get up to your alarm. Get mad that you didn't go to bed on time." Like mm. that was like always right. his. And I used to always step back and be like, oh, that makes so much sense. You know, <laughs> like like you're mad at the outcome when you didn't prepare well. Um, chastity is like the ultimate being aware and being, you know, really looking into what is going to take me down this path. Um, I mentioned it last night, you know, to to rev someone's engine, you know yeah. what I mean? To turn it off and only to turn it off or to to be in a situation, you know, and and have, you know, we always say that your your body wants to follow your heart, yes. right? So these are all like chastity catchphrases, you know, but but I think there's definitely truth in that, you know? And um, so one of the things I tell, I tell people about chastity, I love the image of like this beautiful house. So your relationship is like this gorgeous house. And in, in that house, you know, if you have a really beautiful old house, you're definitely gonna have a, a beautiful like fireplace, right? With like a mantle, think like Victorian wood carving and you're like, oh my gosh, I love this, right? So, and I always say, your relationship is like this house. And the fire, like the passions, like, you know, the emotions, like all of the good and the true and the beautiful that makes a man and a woman and like what you're, what you're longing for, what you want, is this beautiful fire. 
And um, what, I mean, this beautiful mantle and this fireplace and all of this, like that is like marriage. Yeah. And I always tell people, I'm like, when you get married, you, you're gifted this beautiful fireplace and the Lord gives you all this wood and kindling and gasoline and says, go for it. Yeah. But what happens if you build a fire in the middle of your house, which is the relationship, and you don't have a fireplace? You are going to burn your house down. Yeah. And then that's, I think, what a good image for chastity is like, you want this beautiful relationship. And sex is good. Sex is holy. This is all amazing. But I think what holds people up is, is you know, I talk a lot about the cycle of use. And I yeah. talk a lot about, like, emotionally using people and physically using people. And we don't talk about it out loud a lot, but, like, these things happen. And even in these good relationships, you know, sometimes people will be like, but, Sarah, how do I know they're not using me? Like, in you know, before marriage when they're, you know, whether they're, whatever they're struggling with, you know? And they're like, but I love them. Like, how, you know, I want to show them that I love them. Like, how do I know? But then, like, how do I know that they're not using me? And I always say, I, want, I wish I had this, like, beautiful million-dollar answer. But, like, the answer is you don't. Like, you don't. Until you're married, until you have vows, until you have rings, until you're sitting before that beautiful fireplace in that house that is your relationship. Yeah. If you light that fire, it will burn your house down. And I think the image of, like, that kind of, you know, chastity is not just the foe, it's not the enemy, it's actually the great friend of love, it's the rib cage to the heart. It's, you know, if someone can say to you, like, I love you and I want what's best for you and I don't want to use you, and I'm willing to put aside what I want in this moment, which is to be with you, you know, to show you you're beautiful, to do all, like, I want this in this moment. Not that that's bad, like, that's good, it's just reserved for another time. Like, be able to be able to say, I, I don't want to use you. I want to elevate your goodness, and I want to respect you and protect you. Mm -hmm. If people can, like, put that aside and choose that and choose you, what can't they do for you? And so chastity is really an exercise in selflessness and sacrifice. You know, lo love is really sacrifice when it all boils down to it. Um, and that was when I tell the students all the time, like, I watched my husband, like, as we were dating, as we were engaged, like, I watched him die to himself all the time. I watched him say things like, you know, I'd really love to – go on a walk with you because it was just getting us out of a situation. You know, I mean, he yeah, constantly yeah. was like looking out for our purity. And I always say like, what a gift, whether yeah. you're the man or the woman, to be able to make those decisions before you get into a like into a, a situation that could be difficult. Um, and so again, you see virtue in action. And I think that what, what I try to get them to see is it's not just a no, it's not just a right. dang it. Like, you know, I, I, I hate that we can't do this. It's a yes to me like proving and showing you my love and showing you that I am in it for the long haul and I can do this sacrifice thing for you when we have three kids under five and everyone's throwing up. And you know what I mean? Like yeah. you see, I see those. I knew my husband had the stuff that he, like I knew he was made of the right stuff. Yeah. And I think he saw that in me too. And what a great discernment piece. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if you can't, again, that chastity piece, when I get, not, not, not off the bat, when I'm working with a couple, yeah. like this is, I'm talking 10 conversations in, you know, and I ask them, like, if they're really struggling, if they're fighting a lot, if they're not seeing God's will, if they're just feeling like they're at each other all the time, I'm just like, how's your purity? Mm -hmm. Because it really is, it'll, it'll create a lot of um, blinders, it'll create a lot of drama, it'll create a lot of resentment, yeah. it'll create a lot of um, angst. And so I think just, I mean, again, you're, you said it at Mass today, like you're saying a lot of, sometimes you have to say no to a greater good. Mm -hmm. And and that is 100%. Like these, I'm saying no to things that I'm excited to pursue later, but I'm saying no to them for a greater yes. And that is for me to be able to show you my love in, yeah. a, in a radical way um, that is just completely foreign to our entire, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, into yeah. the foreign to our entire world. Yeah. Um, but it does make sense. I know. And, so. and, and it's just, you're, you're so good on this. Uh, but to think about it too, like you said, the discernment, the, really the discernment, not like God show me a sign, but to say, okay, I have to decide whether or not I'm going to yoke myself, right, to, to join person. myself to this person for the rest of my life. And so this process is to evaluate that. And obviously, again, from the sacrament of marriage, it's are they helping me have a relationship with God? You could say it more broadly. Are they helping me be a better person, you know, yeah. to be a oh good my person? Gosh, yes. And it, this is the trial period. This is the part where you get great it. discernment. Yeah, exactly. the yeah. And so I think you helped me just understand too. It's something a little better. Of it's not it's not just the fact that you're treating each other beneath your dignity uh, by having sort of sexual actions outside of marriage, right? right? It is that, but it's also to say, is the if I keep falling into this with this person repeatedly, and maybe I'm leading them into that, right? What's it indicating about their ability to help? lead me to be the best person I can be and, and what am I what am I doing now? Because 
are we helping each other? You know, and that goes, and I think with, with young people, even good Catholic young people, they think, like, well, this problem is going to be solved when I'm married because once I'm married, then it's just a free you know, for all. Free for all. Right, oh, you yeah, took exactly. the out of my mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's sexual free for all, which is like, you know, yay. Yeah, yay. But, but right. right now it's hard, so whatever. But no. it's, it's the character indications to say, this is the testing ground to say, are they going to be a person who's helping you or are they going to be a person who's not helping you or an occasion of your downfall? Right. And that goes for everything, how you raise your kids, how you do your job, what you, uh, the decisions they make, how you treat each other. In yeah, I mean, you're nailing it. You're nailing ways. it on the head because, again, like, what is the great? I, I mean, I hate saying this, but like, it, it. We as human beings are terrible at controlling our emotions and our passions mm. and our desires, right? Yeah. I mean, we're all in the middle of Lent right now. It's like, oh, fasting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't want it till I can't have it. Two right? and a half weeks in. Yeah, two and a half weeks in, and we're all just like, oh, fasting. But how amazing is it to even evaluate where we are? Like, where you're, like, why is my will so? slacking or so off so yeah. you know and so I I mean purity is just a, is a very clear way of looking at our appetites our our desires yep. our you know Chris Stefanik has the hilarious he always says this he's just so funny he says things and get him and Matt Frag get away with saying things like, <laughs> um and I'm just like oh my gosh but he said we don't need birth control we need self-control yep. and I just thought that I always thought that was such a it jarred me because I was like oh my gosh he said that and I was like but he's there's so much truth there right, right. it's like I mean, for, to have a man and a woman who are attracted to each other and, and see the good in one another, but to be able to say to one another, I can rise above this because I desire your good. Right. And, and the other thing I tell couples a lot, I'm like, if they're struggling especially, you know, when you get married, you're going to struggle together. And so part right. of dating is, how, do we suffer well together? Do we problem solve well together? Because if you're just having sex, then no, that's called makeup sex, and that doesn't Ooh, count. Yeah. Like, no, I'm talking about... No, you don't have the, like, we're just going to, you know, emotional, we're going to have an emotional fight and physically make up. Like, no, that, that was, that is like, that is just damning to your relationship. Like, you are not learning anything about how it's going to be later. Because, again, when you're in times of marriage, like, again, we have full talks on chastity and marriage. Like, it is not just a free-for-all. Yeah. There are times in your life where, again, I mean, this is a whole nother talk, Father, but you know what I mean? Like, they're, like, being able to look at your life and go, am I made yeah. of the stuff that I want to be made of to pursue life as a virtuous woman, as a virtuous man in a marriage? You are laying the groundwork for that marriage in these small dying to yourself. Right. I mean, like, little rules that Swaff and I would make for ourselves, you know, it sounded cheesy, but it wasn't. It was because, like you know, always sitting up and never laying down together. Like I shared some of them last night. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, this is getting so real. No, those um, but I shared I, some of them because people were like, be practical. Yeah. Like it doesn't help anybody to be like, just go, you know, pray about it, be chaste. That helps no one. I mean, everyone knows like they should pray about it and be chaste, but like how to practically do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, we, little things, you know, like yeah. I, I had a bracelet. Um, it was like my Jesus bracelet. It's like, mm -hmm. it's pretty hard to be super sexual when you're <laughs> yeah. like, this is my chastity bracelet. You know what I mean? Like, or just to have things like set around your room to always have the lights on. Like this whole like Netflix, Netflix and chill. We're just oh, going to yeah. like watch movies and I'm like, no, you're not. Yeah, yeah, you're just yeah. going to like walk into a dark room with every yes. temptation. Yes. Like what? So don't do it. Like yeah. Swaff and I to this day, we don't watch a lot of movies because that wasn't how we bonded. Right. We would do a lot with, we would do a lot with other people. We would go on like, you know, walks. We would just, we would get to know one another. And so I really challenge students. I'm like, if the end goal is, is this person the kind of person I want to be married to? Is this the kind of person that I want to have children with? You know, my husband always lays this dream hammer where he says, when you're discerning marriage, I want that one of the great questions to ask is, we're, th we're 10 years into marriage, three kids deep, and I die. Will this person raise my children the way I want them to be raised? Mm -hmm. Like, are we on the same path, like same page? You know, Swaff and I always joke that we say, we share the same telos, the same worldview. You know what I mean? To find someone, because life is hard enough, marriage is hard enough to be in a marriage with someone that you don't feel like you're on the same page with or you don't feel like, you know, or this whole, when we get married, all of our problems are going to go away. It's like, no, when you get married, any problems you have before marriage, they don't go away. They're magnified. Yeah. That is a bold truth. And that is something we say a lot in marriage prep. We're like, we're going to deal with it now or deal with it later. <laughs> and so I would deal with it now, you know? <laughs> and um, so like, let's bring it up. Let's talk about it, yeah. you know? And um, last thing I'll, I'll say about this is I, I talk a lot about engagement because a lot of people think that once they get engaged, like, it's a done deal. I have yeah. a ring, I have a dress, I have 500 invitations and like, this is happening. And I always say like, whoa, like, Engagement is the ultimate discernment because right. you just said to the whole world that you're gonna do like you're look you're stepping towards this. And I always I always ask students and, and you know young adults I'm like what's harder what's harder to call off, 
what's harder to call off, a wedding or to get divorced? Is it harder to call off a wedding or get divorced? And everyone, without hesitation, yeah, oh, say, yeah. it, oh, it's, it's way harder to call off a wedding, way easier to get divorced. Yep. And we have thousands of couples, even good Catholic couples, that are just going through with it. And I just, I really want to ask people, like, you, again, you make a decision 10 steps before you yeah. fall. And so if you're three years in and you're divorced, it's like, what didn't I see? Right. And, and how did chastity play into that? And how did me not being able to rein in those emotional and physical passions hurt my marriage, even maybe end my marriage? And how can I discern well in my dating, in my courting, in my engagement? Mm -hmm. for, so that and because of those sacrifices, seeing each other when you're at your, you know, Will Ferrell has this hilarious thing where he says, before you marry anyone, you have to watch, you know, sit with them with slow internet. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's like these yeah. things where you're like, you have to go through these battles of like, right. who is this person? And chastity is the ultimate, exactly. honestly, light shining upon your virtue. Yeah, no, that's, that's super well said, you know. Uh, what I tell with engagement, as well, I say that there's no bad time to, to say, there's no time that's too late to say we're not going to get married totally. until you're literally standing at the altar saying your vows. Every time up to that is a great time to say, to say we're not well, ready. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, 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 the wine will get drank, you know, yeah, the yeah, food yeah. will get eaten. That's right. People will still gather for a good time. Even if you cancel it on the day, like yeah. the day after, you know, that's the time to say, this is going to work. How are we going to make it work? Yeah, you, Before, yeah, you can exactly. say, is this going to work out? And then once you have your vows, yep. yeah. How is yeah. it going to work? I'm, I'm such a fan of, um, I'm, I'm very appreciative that you bring these things up. And I, I think a lot of chaplains and a lot of priests, um, have, we have to keep you have to keep seeking into this because yeah. it is the hot topic yeah. um, and it affects everything they do because the way they see themselves the way they right. see the opposite sex can I be friends with the opposite sex how do I be friends with the opposite sex how do I date it really does and you know fully encompass probably 50% of their day yeah. and so I just want to thank you so much and all the good work you do at you Mary all like all the priests I'm a huge fan of the Bismarck priests but um, <laughs> of, of all the North Dakota priests but um, just thank you for keeping the conversation going and not being afraid to preach on it and not being afraid to talk about it and being practical with them um, on behalf of a lot of you you know, of us lay women and men and it's we're so thankful yeah. to places with good formations um giving them a good formation and not being afraid to talk about it yeah well i it's it is a it's a joy to talk about it it's sometimes hard but and you, you know to, to to give that practical advice and I, and i think you know what you do so well is to show them we say these things for for their benefit for their happiness like and, yeah. and the out way of that, love out of love like yeah. true love uh, and the way that you share your own story is really helpful too. So I, I could, you know, I think we're going to wrap this up now, but yeah. I, I could have an eight hour video. More, yeah, <laughs> yeah, to next time, Father. Right, yeah, exactly. To next time. I love it. Thanks Thank for you for having me. so much. Sure, anytime. Yeah.